Scotty is uh, 99% James Doohan and 1% accent. Of course, I never thought uh, that I was that good an engineer. I had only done that accent one show before, and that was one episode of Hazel. To me, I just, I just played myself with a Scottish accent. But you don't really have one. Have only, been... only, only when I uh, get paid for it, dearie. It was a job. It was a job. You know, you're not getting uh, the number one Trekkie here. We weren't very uh, optimistic about, you know, the script or the show. And I think that they just uh, got lucky with the show. I've always joked about it. Yes, I feel that I'm responsible for Star Trek's success because I was the guest star on the pilot. I'm the only um, Klingon ever with a Brooklyn accent. I was. I guess officially the first person killed <laughs> on Star Trek. Arn Darvin. I thought it was like a Jewish holiday and Arn Darvin to you too. Don't worry about it, kid. We're gonna freeze you and bring you back. And he never did. Yeah, I never thought of that. Gee, maybe it really was me. A script came by one day about a woman whose fiancé was lost in the stars somewhere. And she was a doctor, and she wanted to sign on board the ship to go out and find her fiancé. And so I thought, Jean, I can play this part. But once after a network has said, no, I mean, we don't want you. Death can make a signal. They don't want to see you pop up again, certainly not in a running role, not in any role, really. I bleached my hair that night and lightened up eyebrows and everything. I went into the office early. And I sat there talking to Penny, his secretary. And um, in he walks, like just looks at me, says hi, walk, looks at Penny, says hi, and into the office he walks. And I said, well, I mean, I really blew that one. <laughs> he didn't, there wasn't even any difference to him. And he comes back out again, and he puts some papers and a couple of instructions on her uh, desk. And uh, he looks over again, just with a nod, and goes back in, and then it happened. Then the door opens again, he says, Majel? And I said, Gene, if I can fool you, I can fool NBC. And he said, yeah, I guess so. We were a small, struggling studio, Desilu, owned by Lucille Ball. I worked for Lucy. Lucy empowered me to get the studio going, and I went and tried my best to get it going. One of the shows I started with was Star Trek. So that's nice material. Frankly, it did not work. As we all know, Star Trek, after the end of the third year, was canceled, and everyone lost money. Now listen, sweetheart, the Federation's moving in. We're taking over. You play ball, we'll cut you in for a piece of the pie. You don't, you're out. All the way out, you know what I mean? Desilu lost money. De Desilu was then Paramount. Paramount lost money. NBC lost money. No, 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 no. The Federation can't get connected with a small-time operation like this. So, I mean, it, it, it was not a bunch of guys in a room saying... And I've spent the other nine-tenths of our combined salaries for the last three days. I'm filling this order for you. Philosophically, what we should do is go and do something for the betterment of mankind. We weren't. We were out to make a buck, okay? I mean, that's very important that audiences, that fans understand that. 